Good evening everyone and welcome to our service of evening prayer. Hopefully you've got hold of the uh, order of service and you've got the, the songs. We're still on the harvest theme and uh, we're going to sing some really good old harvest hymns tonight. We're going to start with Come You Thankful People Come, Raise the Song of Harvest Home. If you've got a book it's uh, 75 in Songs of Fellowship or 101 in Hymns Old and New but the words are on the sheet I sent round. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light, and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Now let's sing Light of Gladness, Lord of Glory. Light of Gladness, Lord of Glory. Jesus Christ, our 
King most holy, shine among us in your mercy. Earth and heaven join their hymn. Let us sing as songs descending as we see the lights of evening father son and spirit praising with the holy seraphim son of god through all the ages worthy of our holiest praises yours a life that never ceases lights which never shall grow dim Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers that my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge, do not leave me defenceless. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. As we draw near to the place of at one moment, let us confess our sins and confess the sins of the world as we contribute to the disaster in our world, as we refuse to share the good things we have with others as we are selfish and as we squander what we have. Let's pray together. Give us tears to see the wonder of your presence. Give us tears to see the wasting of your people. Give us tears to see the wounding of your son. We are the race that helped to make the wood on which you were crucified and still we misuse your creation. We are the race that helped to make the nails that pierced your body, yet still we use work for gain at others' expense. We are the race that did nothing to stop your betrayers, yet still we are ruled by comfort or cowardice. Lord, we misuse your world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We're not quick to share what we have with others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Help us to be better stewards of your creation. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to read from the Old Testament. Um, it's from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50. And uh, if you're following it in a Good News Bible, you'll find it on page 716. 
in the Old Testament part, page 716. Isaiah 50, and it's verses 4 to 10. The obedience of the Lord's servant. The Sovereign Lord has taught me what to say, so that I can strengthen the weary. Every morning he makes me eager to hear what he is going to teach me. The Lord has given me understanding, and I have not rebelled or turned away from him. I bared my back to those who beat me. I did not stop them when they insulted me, when they pulled the hairs of my beard and spat in my face. But their insults cannot hurt me, because the Sovereign Lord gives me help. I brace myself to endure them. I know that I will not be disgraced, for God is near, and he will prove me innocent. Does anyone dare to bring charges against me? Let us go to court together. Let him bring his accusation. The Sovereign Lord himself defends me. Who then can prove me guilty? All my accusers will disappear. They will vanish like moth-eaten cloth. All of you that honour the Lord and obey the words of his servant, the path you walk may be dark indeed, but trust in the Lord, rely on your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, in place of the psalm, we're going to sing, You Shall Go Out With Joy. Um, no, we're not, sorry. We're going to sing, To the O Lord Our Hearts We Raise. This has got um, elements of the psalm in it. Again, it's a beautiful uh, harvest hymn, I believe. And um, it's just saying that all the creation, it's all there to be praised and to be glorified. But unless we toil for the Lord, unless we share it with others, then um, it all is to no avail. But we look forward to that time when we will be with the Lord forever. Golden fields spread far and broad, 
Gospel according to Luke, chapter 13, verses 22 to 30. You'll find it on page 97 in the Good News Bible New Testament, if you're following it in that particular version. Luke, chapter 13, verse 22, and it's headed the narrow door. Jesus went through towns and villages, teaching the people and making his way towards Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Sir, will just a few people be saved? Jesus answered them, Do your best to go in through the narrow door, because many people will surely try to go in, but will not be able. The master of the house will get up and close the door. Then when you stand outside and begin to knock on the door and say, Open the door for us, sir. He will answer you, I don't know where you come from. Then you will answer, we ate and drank with you. You taught in our town. But he will say again, I don't know where you come from. Get away from me, all you wicked people. How you will cry and grind your teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God while you are thrown out. People will come from the east and the west from the north and the south, and sit down at the feast in the kingdom of God. Those who are now last will be first, and those who are now first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, if you have the order of service, let's respond to that by using the words of Mary in the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. <coughs> casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> First of all, Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so in faith and trust we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness. You give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And if you have the sheet in front of you, let's say the evening collect together. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night 
for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, on this our festal day, we come to you and we acknowledge and rejoice in what your wonderful world produces. I know we take it for granted, but next time we're sitting eating a meal, help us to appreciate where all this incredible food has come from. That somebody grew it, that somebody raised the animal somebody put it all together and got it into a shop so that we could buy it and eat it. And as we enjoy our meal times, help us to think of those who have very little, those who have nothing, and pray that we would be generous enough to share what we have with them and to give them the bare necessities of life so they will be able to enjoy and eat and know that they are living for you. We're going to sing in a moment. Now thank we all our God. And it's moments like these when we rejoice in what the good things that we do have that we need to come to you and say how wonderful it all is. But we appreciate just how difficult it is for the church in the world to communicate your love and how there are many people who don't want to say thank you because they're not happy, they're not satisfied, they don't enjoy the life that they live. We pray for that church, your wonderful church, trying so hard to communicate the good news of your love across the world. And this week especially we pray for the Church of England in Gloucester Diocese. We pray for the church in Scotland, West Africa, the USA, Australia, Burundi and South Sudan. In our own Diocese of Chelmsford, we pray for the Deanery of Whitton. And we pray for the Right Reverend Roger Morris, the Bishop of Colchester and our diocesan bishop, the Right Reverend Gouley Francis de Juanma. And pray for Bishop John, Bishop of Bradwell, as he has contracted COVID. Fortunately, he's not suffering too badly, but he is suffering. And we pray, Lord, that you would deliver him from this disease and bring him back to work amongst us. We pray for the world, the world into which Christ came, the world that's broken and damaged and selfish and not sharing what it has with others. Lord, as each place reaps its harvest, we pray that every country will be prepared to share what it has with those within its country that don't have much and those beyond its borders who are struggling. And where crops have been destroyed by wind and rain and bad weather and hurricanes and by lava flows from volcanoes. We pray, Lord, that all these natural disasters would remind us that we have a world we need to look after and we need to address issues of global warming. But we also have to share what we have with those whose livelihood is threatened, with those whose food has been destroyed. And especially in those countries where there is still war and conflict and terrorism, we pray that sense and sanity and justice will reign so that peace may be established. We pray for our parish and our community. Um, it was lovely to worship up at St Peter's this afternoon. It would be great to bring more people together to worship you and we pray that as we move forward that would be a reality. And we pray for the sick. We have a, a very long list of sick people on our notice sheet. Perhaps we could just pause and look at those names. And pray too for our own Doreen Fairman, who's not well at present. We've asked, been asked to pray for Sue's daughter, Amber. And of course, all the other names on the list. So let's look at them and pause and bring them before the Lord. Our 
and we pray for the bereaved especially the family of Angus Fraser whose funeral is on Tuesday I continue to pray for Lorraine and for John's family and we think about his ashes being interred in a couple of weeks time pray for Richard who's uh, facing a difficult anniversary Lord, you are the God of hope. You are the God of the future. And we pray for all those who feel lost and lonely and sad, that you would assure them of your love and concern for their loved ones and fill us with resurrection hope that you will raise us up on the last day to be with you forever. Now let's say the grace together as we Pray for one another and lift all our prayers to the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The narrow door. You might have been reasonably shocked by those words of Jesus, but it's not easy being a Christian and it's not easy to become a Christian. It's not really something you just sort of drift into. I know some people grow up in a Christian household and perhaps never feel they've had a moment when they've become a Christian. But there are lots of other people who have come to it later on in life. And they will know that 
there comes a moment when you have to make a decision. It's not easy. But Jesus is not trying to stop anyone from getting into the kingdom. All Jesus is trying to say is, there is a cut-off point in our lives. And we should not miss the opportunity. Being a Christian is what some people try to put off. Um, they have this rather incorrect idea that Christianity is dull. Um, did you notice in that hymn, To the O Lord Our Hearts We Raise, it says, um, We bear the burden of the day, and often toil seems dreary. And some people may feel like that about Christianity. Oh, it's a drudge. You've got to go to church. You've got to be good. You've got to be nice to other people. You've got to give money to God. Oh dear, no, 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 this is not what I want to do at the moment. And so some people think they have to live their life now, whatever that means. I suspect sometimes it means live their life in a slightly dodgy way and maybe not according to the truth. But we'll think about God when we're older. I mean, how many young people do you know who take out life insurance when they're in their 20s? because they don't want to think about death. They want to think about living their life and, oh, I'll worry about that later. But of course, if you worry about it later, it might be too late and the door may be closed. Years ago, people used to wait until they were on their deathbed before they became Christians. Constantine, the very first Christian emperor, was not baptised until he was dying. But the trouble is, you can't predict when your deathbed is going to be. You may not have the opportunity to think about things before you die, because death may creep up on you very, very suddenly. I mean, my dad, God bless him, um, not that I was worried about what my dad was thinking, because I knew what he was thinking, but my dad had a heart attack and died. And the whole process was over well within 24 hours and of course that doesn't give you any time at all to think about all those things no those things need to be thought about long before we ever get near the end because we must not delay once this life is over there is no second chance i know some people like to think that some people very sadly go down the spiritualist route when they, someone they love has died, they want some sort of assurance that their loved one is all right, they want some sort of sign from somewhere else that everything is okay. Well, everything is okay, because when our loved ones die, we commend them to God's care, and God is looking after them. They're not wandering about, sending inane messages back to earth. They're with the Lord, and they will remain with the Lord, in his care until that great day when we're all raised up to be with him forever. But what we have to bear in mind is the decisions that we make now are the decisions that we take with us. There is no in-between world, there's no sort of uh, check and balance when we get through um, the gates, you know, to, to, to readjust what we've done. No, what we think now and what we do now and what we believe now, and the choices that we make now, are what we take with us into eternity. So, watch out, because that narrow door may not be open forever. Jesus died once and for all, for all of us. And he is risen from the dead to give us the gift of life. He is waiting with arms open wide to greet us. Now, it may be hard to get through the narrow door, but that narrow door is open, and Jesus is waiting for us to squeeze through, squeeze away from all the pain of this world, which is trying to stop us and thwart us, so that we can go with him. Don't leave it too long. Don't wait until the end, because the door may be closed, and you may have missed the opportunity to commit your life to Jesus. I know that you have, and I rejoice with you about that commitment. But there are many people out there who haven't done it yet, and they need to be saved. And it's our responsibility to tell them about the love of God and to make sure that they don't miss out 
and that they pass through that narrow door and follow Jesus. Amen. Now, we really are going to sing You Should Go Out With Joy. I oh, know I nearly had it earlier, but um, it is the most appropriate song to sing as we finish. Um, if you're working off the sheet, you've got the words there. Um, if you're in the book, it's uh, Songs of Fellowship 640 or Hymns Old and New 571. And we'll sing it a few times. And as you probably remember, it's supposed to get faster as we go through. The, um, the, our karaoke machine version of that's pretty good because of course it um, it just you can speed it up even more than it is sped up at the moment anyway let's pray may the road rise up to meet you may the wind be always at your back may the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall gently upon your fields and until we meet again may God hold you in the hollow of his hand and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Stay in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>